What is up guys, Winter Kills here, welcome back to another post-commentary duel video. We've got, I think it is, what is it, DDD versus ABC, another alphabet matchup. You guys seem to enjoy the last DDD versus ABC. Um, this, uh, this one's gonna go a bit differently. Um, this, uh, this DDD build is, um, a much newer build and I'm probably gonna do a profile on it. Um, unfortunately the one thing that ended up being an issue for me this this game was just not being able to draw a good hand uh, when it mattered but the extra deck has been changed I can completely change the main deck um, and I want to get one last uh, deck profile out before the new support is here just so if anybody's playing DDD right now maybe I can give them a list to sort of go off of and uh, you know do something like that and I'm probably gonna do one more mermail uh, deck profile since I have crystal wing now I can put together the Zulkin build that I uh, played before and um, I don't know that's that's something I want to do now that I have and now that I finally have a crystal wing and I also recorded another challenge pack opening video uh, the same night this was recorded so you guys got that to look forward to I'm gonna kind of wait on that video for maybe a day or two got to edit it just right um, just like the last two were um, so, you see the Suki only play has gone into the uh, double maxi being discarded off of that. Uh, I think he had to get rid of three cards, setting a, another Union Hanger face down in the field spell position, just so he does not have to lose that card. He'll be able to, once it's flipped up, get that search again, that clutch search. Going into Norden, overlaying into a rank four, of course, going into Abyss Dweller. He knows what I'm playing against. Um... So, obviously going to go into Dweller, then go into the Busted Dragon, uh, and then Standby Phase. He's going to burn the last Dweller, uh, Dweller material. Really wishing I had a, uh, a raw sphere mode right now, because that would just come in so clutch. Uh, my hand, I don't think right now, is too good. There's still some last minute changes I want to make to my DDD build. Um... And uh, probably, I, I probably want to, I really do want to order uh, Vanity's Lord, or Vanity's uh, Emperor, or whatever. It's, I can't believe I keep forgetting the name, but I know Alties are like $10, Commons and Rares are both like a buck, and you know I'm going to go for the Alti. Like, why why would I why would I fuck around and get a Common when I can go for the Alti? Uh, $10 for uh, an Alti like that isn't too bad. I was playing Triple Trade-In in this build, and I cut a lure down to two. Um, and another thing, Vanity's, Vanity's Lord, I, I hope, I gotta, like, look it up, like, I, I don't know what's wrong with me, um, Vanity's Lord is a level 8, so it is a trade and target if I can't, um, if I can't summon it, it's, it's an immediate trade and target, and it is a light, though, so it's not an allure target, um, which isn't too bad, it's, a, it's a fair trade-off either way, I'd probably still, um, play maybe one Vanity's, uh, Vanity's Fiend, um, but the, the one, the one issue that I have with Vanity's Fiend is, um, is just the fact that you can't, uh, you can't do anything, you can't, you can't play, uh, obviously your opponent can't, and it's best when you have a field to support the Vanity's Fiend, but there's been times, uh, or maybe it's maybe it's just a D to D T C G thing where Vanity's Fiend um, really isn't that good in the deck right now. And I say this because like if you can't if you can't get an established board with the Vanity's Fiend and you just drop the Vanity's Fiend, it's a very fragile field, and uh, it makes it uh, makes it hard to to win with the Vanity's Fiend because it's a lot of times it's your go to. Uh, win condition is to drop the vanity Fiend, but if you don't have anything else to back it up it can be very easy cracked and there's a prime example of that in this game and you also see that Farfa ended up discarding off of that twin twister Farfa is now in the main great uh, addition with Beatrice and um, really really liking it really really liking it the Farfa is something I've been wanting to play in here for a while I've also thought about playing uh, I should all dragon uh, to play as well because I was gonna play in my new build uh, like with uh, rank fours because Copernicus is gonna be out. Being able to send Zephyros off of Beatrice, 
summon that off of uh, its own effect and then be able to overlay that with Copernicus to be able to go into um, Nightmare, Evil Swarm Nightmare, because that card is really, really good, and uh, I definitely want to be playing that in my build. Um, Vanity's Ruler, it's called. Okay, I just looked it up. Mid-commentary, that's why I may have been losing my uh, train of thought. This card cannot be special. I mean, your opponent cannot special summon monster. It's a level 8 light, 2,500 attack, 600 defense. Okay, it is Vanity's Ruler. Vanity's Ruler is the card I'm talking about. Um, so yeah, I have to scoop that game. No good getting out, uh, outplayed, outpaced, really, by uh, the ABC. Um, but this will not be the case once the new support is here, and I really cannot wait to play the new support. I'm like getting so hyped up about it. I'm ready to uh, film that special uh, vlog ask video when the structure deck is out. As requested, it will be happening. Um, here's 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 what I was talking about. Like my play was not that great. I didn't have that much to go off in my hand. The allure didn't really help me out either. Um, so I just basically went uh, Swirl Slime, you know, summon the Riding Rock in my hand as Tribute Fodder for the Vanity's Fiend, and uh, it works for so long though. Um, it's basically just a game of back and forth at this point. Um, I did play against Magispectors, like, right when I got to the shop to playtest. Um, one of our other friends was there playing, and he's in a, a couple of the other, uh, dual videos as well. Um, but I did play, I did play him with, uh, this DDD build, and I really wish I would have recorded it, because it was a, it was a great game on my behalf, a lot of great plays. Um... Like Crystal Wing, Beatrice, Turn 1, uh, just making a lot of great plays. Um, especially against Mad Spectre, which I would view as a hard matchup. Really wasn't proving to be that hard of a matchup, uh, given, given the fact that maybe he didn't open too well one or two games. Um, but still, still really wish I would have got that match on the recording. Uh, that would have been cool to have, but it is what it is. Vanity's Fiend still, still holding it down. Uh, a assault core coming down, triggering the field spell to equip it with a B Buster Drake, and they'll pass it back to me. There's a lure of darkness. I am hoping I draw into uh, like a puppet master or something. A pot of a acquisitiveness going off, trying to get some draws going here. The, usually the one thing that I ended up doing with the vanity fiend, um, but obviously my graveyard is not equipped for it, and I guess it's I don't know why I even said it, but like the best thing to do with the uh, the vanity fiend is usually uh, when you're ready and your graveyard's filled um, basically what you do is uh, just tribute it away for a puppet master now I think um, yeah okay I'm pretty sure I attacked his uh, buster drake there so that's why the assault core went to the graveyard because that one was equipped to the buster drake and the buster drake in the spell zone is equipped to the assault core just to keep things clear he's gonna keep that assault core in attack mode the 200 defense does not bode very well It'll allow something small maybe like a, a slime to beat over it so he's smart uh, to not change the defense another assault core getting equipped with the crush wyvern and activating foolish burial just trying to deck then at this point for that dark hole he plays because once he gets once he gets the goddamn dark hole uh, to his hand it's pretty much game over because I have no way to back up my field um, so it's just a matter of time right now. I can't get anything going for me, obviously, because there's a Vanity CP on my field. Uh, Jet Synchron going to the grave. Uh, just in case it is out, I could make a pretty decent play by discarding Glow Bulb to summon it. And um, putting Glow Bulb in the grave by summoning Jet Synchron is always pretty clutch. He did Foolish Barrel, I think it was Max E, just probably to Decton. Doesn't want to draw into it at this point. Not too much special summoning going on. Um, so, yeah, I'm debating now if I want to set the, the glow ball. Decide not to. Equip and unequip. And there's the dark hole. Making the assault core unaffected by spells. And that crush wyvern will get summoned. And it's pretty much uh, a duggy fest from here on out. He just goes to town on me. And I, I really can't. I can't do anything at all. Um, I was going to... Uh, like, is the one thing I think my DDD build lacks is because I, I just don't feel like or want to take 
the cards out of my main deck of my Mermail deck is like I always have this dilemma and I'm pretty sure maybe a couple other people do and maybe I'm not the only one who deals with this but like you have two decks for me it's Mermail and DDD and I, I, I hate having to swap uh, cards in between each deck like I'd rather just have a set for the one deck and a set for the deck and that's like I, I have extra Raigeki so that's really not a problem and I guess if I uh, looked a little harder, I could probably find some extra cards to devote to DDD because trains I'm going to kind of put to the side. ABC I'm going to kind of put to the side. I've been done with that deck for a while. Um, so should all trains are going to get pushed to the side. And Mermels, I guess, are going to get kind of pushed to the side as well. And I, I, I want to take the Maxis out of there just to throw them in uh, the DDD build because I feel like Maxi should be in there. Although I'm probably going to be playing it as going first because I feel like that's how the deck should be played in my opinion as a going first build. Perfectly viable as a going second build. Um, I, I have no doubt that it can play going second, but I think going first is going to be how I'm going to play. So I don't know if Maxi will be a good main deck choice. Um, maybe it still will be to make a good field and have that Maxi in hand, but it also does take up space as not being a combo piece. So I don't know. That's my dilemma. Anyways, you see me get destroyed there at the end. Hand not looking too well as he makes an incredible field. So yeah, hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to, of course, leave a like. And uh, let me know what you think down in the comment section below. And as always, guys, winner kills. Signing out. We'll see you in the next one.